what's good with it in the hood with it welcome back to the collective clips where today show we're definitely getting it in but before we do let's hit that like and subscribe button as i sit here and i tell you right now man we're about to get it in a prison bowl the way i does it because it don't stop right um i was in the mood man to bust a bowl so we're gonna do a jailhouse bowl prison bowl but before we do, hit that like and subscribe button. Put your notification bell on also. That way you're directing the direction of the dope content I'm kicking. And I'm going to tell you a little story while I'm doing it. First and foremost, I got my pickles, summer sausage, beef sticks, all cut up in a bowl. Yes, a big, big boy bowl. It's about to go down. And of course, I got my Doritos. I got my classic potato chips. I got my chicharrones. I got my jalapenos, my Louisiana hot sauce, my cheese. My soups, yes, it's going to go down. So I wanted to tell a story about a degenerate, right? What's the word degenerate mean? You know, uh, a lot of people think a non-active gang member is a degenerate. Degenerate is a way that you carry yourself, man. I got the soup right here done. Let me pour the soup in the bowl. We're going to get busy. Excuse my old fucking old school uh, pot. It's just the way I does it. I got the soup in the bowl. And I'm going to start adding my ingredients. But anyways, a degenerate is the way a guy carries himself. When you drop out of a gang or you're no longer associated with the chicharrones and you're part of the gang, you're considered, I guess, a degenerate, right? Um, but I'm going to tell you guys a cold story. How one nor degenerate Norteño, northerner, was able to establish a whole yard. And nobody even knew, right? It affected me. It affected a lot of other people. I was talking to a homeboy the other day, man, who was actually in the same yard. And we got to talking about this individual. And he was like, damn, bro, we should have recognized it from the gate. And I said, yeah, you ain't lying, right? <laughs> Believe me, you ain't lying. This guy definitely tremendously affected my career. Um, I'm going uh, to add some cheese to it. A little cheese. Um, it definitely, definitely affected my, my get down. So anyways, this cat, that's enough cheese. The cat um, was a guy named Evil from Castroville, right? When I pulled up to Susanville Prison, he was already in the back, meaning he was already in Ad Seg. Seasoning packets got to go in. And uh, he had been there for quite some time. You know, when I had just got to that prison, they were flipping it, meaning that there was non-active Norteños. That was a 50-50 yard. And what they were doing was they were flipping it. They had got into the mix. And I've told that story before. And so that with the whites, the non-active northerners and the whites were fighting over tobacco on that yard. So what they were doing was they were um, bringing active Northanials. But before they just brought us directly onto the yard, some of them lace chips, they would, um, they were placing us in an ad seg overflow, basically putting us in the hole. Um, and we were starting to gain numbers. There was about 80 of us in that hole. I remember we were deep. And that guy, Evil, was back there. And he was directing traffic, you know, because he was fraudulently telling everybody. I mean, I assumed for many years that he was, you know, uh, somebody of a high caliber uh, from one of the big four gangs. He was saying he was a carnal, right? That he was an NF member. And so automatically, some Doritos, automatically, you know, he was getting that respect. So this guy was smart, man. He had been around. He was an old school convict, knew the game, knew how to twist people up knew what it was I do it big huh and he started to um, put his plan in effect so he already had those that were in position to be somebody he already had their mentor twisted up he had minds twisted up we all thought he was somebody you know we thought he was the man but he wasn't man he was playing us all out of pocket he was already on freeze but the guys that knew what time it was with him weren't there they had him on walk alone status, meaning when we'd go out to group yard, all the Norteños, the actives, he'd be on a yard alone. And we always wondered why he was on, you know, uh, walk alone. And the reason he was on walk alone was because some jalapenos, got to have jalapenos. The reason he was on walk alone, uh, got to have a lot of them too, was because he, um, he was on freeze prior to us getting there, right? They had shipped him there, put him on walk alone. The gang counselor that was there, the main guy, I think his name was Walsh, right? He was a, the main gang coordinator. He kept the, uh, he, that dude kept him in the loop of everything. So meanwhile, while he's over here establishing this yard, yes, I said it right, establishing a yard. Now, what does it take to establish a yard? You got to have good mentor. You got to know, be known, know what's up. You know, when you're a B or, or a C in the Northern movement, meaning that you have some status, you, uh, 
You know what it is to establish a yard. That's what you're trained to do. You're able to plant your flag wherever you go. You're able to get a whole yard running, to get a movement going, uh, to establish that place for your people. This guy was sending all kinds of filters. We lost constantly, man. There was shit going while we were in the hole. He was implementing the plan, putting the plan in progress so that when we got out to that yard, um, it was on and cracking. Let me mix them up one time for your mind. This is what this guy was doing, right? And uh, I'll show you guys how it looks in a minute. So anyways, he's, um, he's definitely got that going on for him, right? Now, meanwhile, the whole time, none of us knew he was in bad standings. So what had happened was, you know, we ended up hitting the main line and this guy was calling the shots from the back, meaning he was running the whole program for the Norteños from the hole, which usually that's how it goes down, man. There's people that are validated. They can't be on them yards. Um, and, you know, this is before the end of hostilities. This is before, you know, uh, indeterminate shoes. So we all pretty much figured, you know, because they were sending a lot of us that weren't seasoned, basically, as far as prison. A lot of the guys, well, there was a lot that were seasoned, but they were sending a lot of people from reception. So we weren't seasoned with what was going on in them times. We didn't know who was who and what was what, just what we were being told. And as soon as we get there, we pull up. This is a homie. He's checking us. Hey, Holmes, who are you? He's fucking putting us through the clearance process, right? And all the politics that go into it. Oh my God, this looks fantastic, right? So he's doing his thing with us. He manipulated us. He was able to run that yard with an iron fist from the back for a long time. So trip out. So I told you guys my whole story of how man fucking, you know, um, eventually right there on that yard, last in yard, three yard, um, it didn't quite work out for me, man, because I was questioning some bullshit that I was seeing. And this guy definitely sent out the wheel on me, man, that I found out later on. Uh, to have me removed or to put me in danger and uh, or to have me do a removal so that way I could go to the back, man. And instead, of, you know, and, and, and I was thinking about going to the back. I ain't going to lie. After I got off red on red and plead my case, that was definitely a thought of mine. Right. Um, but later on, it would have fell on deaf ears because this was actually the guy that sent the word out on me. <laughs> you know, so um, he was one of those bandito characters, the type that didn't have the best interests of the Raza, the northern Raza at that time. All he cared about was his best interest and getting high and doing his thing. You know, you hear a lot of people say on YouTube, especially, oh, they're just a bunch of guys calling shots in the back, getting high. That's not the case, man. Um, there's a lot of guys doing their thing for whatever reason they're doing it for. But he was he was a bandito. Right. So the yard was established. It was up and running. So obviously he did something for the north. Right. This is how my bowl looks. Just so you know, you know, I got to hit it with some. Uh, some of that Louisiana hot sauce one time for my mentality. So, um, oh wait, I soak it. I like a lot of it. So anyways, this is that prison bowl. Facts. See what it looks like? Oh yes, there will be sangre. So anyways, you know, I kind of had an inkling and a feeling after I'm on the other side, I'm in the back, I'm in the hole, I'm waiting to be transferred, man, to whatever prison they're going to transfer me to. I used to go to a night yard which was a group yard for guys that were already 50 50 or no longer affiliated or, or associating you know with whatever group they were from they had some ex-northerners some ex-southerners whatever it's just what it was man um this guy used to be out there on the yard too by himself at night it was evening time and susanville's cold man snowing and shit and i remember i'd be out there and he hey little brother hey little brother now he knew my standings he knew i was no longer a uh, part of anything because he put me in that position or I put myself in that position. He sent the word out to keep me in that position. Um, so if I wanted to plead my case, it was going to fall on deaf ears anyways, because this guy was a degenerate. Little did we know he was fucking all bad. You know, and most of these guys that are all bad back in them days, you know, it's pretty much different. It's cut and dry now. Everyone knows who everyone is. But back then, people were able to wiggle and manipulate. So anyways, I'd go back there and we'd chop it up. He'd shoot me coffee through the fence. He'd have that gang coordinator, Walsh, man, dude. Uh, uh, come bring me coffee to my cell, look out for me, man. And I always wondered if this dude's active and all that and really high power. And I hit, I hit him up on it. Believe I question shit. I'm like, hey, bro, we're not supposed to be communicating. I mean, on my part, it is what it is. But on your part, bro, you know, I would have never did that if I was in your position. And he was like, ah, oh, bro, I, I run this shit. I do what the fuck I want to do. He was showing de degenerate characteristics. And that's what it is. The me, me, me movement. When bottles are doing that, that's when you know there's something bad. Just like that, you know, 10 5 a Kipura, you could tell. Like, hey, homie, you're no, no one is no one man is bigger than the whole group. No one man is bigger than than that. 
So I knew a lot of his homeboys from Castro or some of them that I did YA time with or prison time with. So we chop it up about that and whatever. After I questioned it and he pretty much told me I had an inkling and a feeling. So anyways, I end up shipping out. I'm done with this cat, man. And the other day I get into a conversation with a homeboy that actually pulled up to Lassen Yard when, you know, right after I left. And uh, very well-known homie, solid as fuck. He's changed his life now. Now he's went, you know, uh, he's just changed, man. He got out of prison. Um, he didn't fucking flip on no one, do no any faulty shit. He just decided, you know, to move on in his life. It is what it is. Call him what you want. I, I'm sure he doesn't give a fuck. And he's someone that you wouldn't want to say it to his face. He's a monster, right? So anyways, he's like, yeah, bro, I remember that one. Remember I was on the Pentagon? That was Building 3. We used to call Building 3 the Pentagon because anybody who was anybody was functioning north or south, black or white was in that building. That was the building. Now, for some reason, they kept all the, I guess you would call them, People with status or shot callers, the majority of them in that one building. It wasn't everybody, but it was a lot, right? So me and him got to talking the other night, man. We found each other on TikTok, started chopping game and getting to know each other, um, you know. And uh, he's telling me stories that I knew about. I'm telling stories, and the evil's name gets mentioned. I'm like, hey, man, fucking, you remember evil? And he was like, damn, bro. Did you know that fool was a degenerate the whole time running the show? I said, I kind of had that feeling. He says, yeah, man. Um, he goes, actually... You know, a couple of more homeboys, seasoned homeboys rolled up and they knew all about that cat. And we were trying to actually send people to the back to get at him. Right. Um, but that dude fucking that fucking cop protected him, you know, and that's what happens with these characters that are like that. They play that high power role. They're really CIs, man. They're really working with with uh, the administration. Let me take a bite. Susanville. <laughs> Look at that motherfucker. Mm hmm. That's how the gun does it. Cheesy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. One more bite for the hint deck. Mm. For those of you that don't know, can I get one more? Now you know. And for the one cat that's going to go in the comments and be like, we don't want to watch you shoving fucking food in your fucking mascara. Go watch that Asian dude eat a fucking hamburger from Burger King and in and out and tell you what's better. Anyway, so look. Um, this is what happens. They couldn't get to him. So there was actually a good, couple of good homeboys, solid, that I was there with. I remember them. Righteous ass dudes. Righteous ass Norteños, man. Remember, again, just because I backed up and I was no longer part of the Norteño movement didn't mean that I didn't have a lot of love and still don't have a lot of love for a lot of these vatos I did time with. These were my brothers, man. We fought side by side. You know, we busted spreads. We did our thing. We got a lot of, lot of respect for him. So anyways, he said a couple of the homies, they were going to ship him out of state. Okay, that's what they were doing back then. I remember in them times, this was 2006, 2007, they were shipping a lot of homeboys, a lot of everybody out of state. Oklahoma, Arizona, some went to Mississippi. Um, in fact, they shipped one righteous ass homeboy out to Arizona. He ran into one of these guys that's a YouTuber. Um, they were out there kicking it, right? So, excuse me, it's fucking just, I feel like Frank the Tank, it just tastes so good when it hits the lips. So anyways, he said that they were going to roll a couple homeboys up, meaning that they were going to jam. And the homeboys refused, right? And usually you can't refuse a movement. So all the, the other homeboys were kind of tripping, like, what the fuck's going on? Why are they guys refusing? But what it was, was, they weren't refusing to leave. They were cool with that. They'll go, Norteños will go wherever you put them. So were Sureños. They'll go, believe me, they'll just go establish on that yard or try at least, right? They were trying to get to the back to whack this cat. They were trying to get to the back. So they figured if they fucking suited the cops up, made them sell extract them, they would put them in the hole pending, you know, being shipped out. And maybe they were just, maybe they were able to get at this cat. Because what I had heard was this cat... Start. They uh, took his uh, walk alone status away, and he was actually doing group yard for a minute out there. He figured he had everyone manipulated. He had been there long enough. This is now going on after I left a couple years, so he was already there. You know, um, he didn't know that they had found out about his his dirt. So they were trying to get back there to whack him, man. Facts. Never were able to do it. They ended up shipping him out. They ended up moving that cat, man. But it was just that easy. For a degenerate or somebody who's um, not non-active. That's different when you're a dropout or non-active. But a lot of these dudes back in these days, these old school convicts used to do that shit. They'll play the active role 
you know, for their safety and security, but also to manipulate the gente. So at that time, <laughs> facts, 2006, 2007, Susanville got established by a fucking degenerate, non-active Norteño. Eventually, man, they got the ship righted and that guy shipped out and everything was everything. And I'm sure, man, you know, Baltus ain't stupid, but it, it was, man. And that fool was a straight tecato in the back, running everything, man, shooting out all the filters, we lost. And I remember the homie told me, one more bite. Truth. In all my time locked up, I ain't never, and I mean never, ever seen someone bust down like that dude did it. He used to try to break homies. So... I remember when I did go to the oil one time when I was still active, we had a group yard. So we go out there, this vault would be on the other side, right? This vault literally used to say this to people, facts, right? I'm going to bring the other homeboy on in my interview with man, um, so you guys can get to know his story and, and kind of hear some of these stories that I'm telling you, the truth, right? Um, that's coming soon. We're going to work on that this weekend. But anyways, this vault will fucking... Uh, he used to be on the other side running the program, basically running the fucking, the bus down, the fucking machina, right? This Valter used to say, hey, truth, you motherfuckers are not, one of you guys is going to go out on a stretcher today. That's it. We're going to bust down to the bus down. You know, hey, I'm not doing my, my holly right, my job right, unless one of you motherfuckers goes out on a stretcher. A couple times homeboys went out on stretchers, couldn't breathe, Right? That Valto was serious about his work. I had never seen no one like he was a machine. But at the same time, he was no good, right? And he was utilizing the gente, the Northern Raza, to bring him dope, to uh, establish this yard, uh, to make him feel like somebody he wasn't. So uh, that's the truth, man. That's really what it was. Anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the story. See this shit? Bomb. Mmm. More Tapatio or more fucking Louisiana. Brothers love this shit. This shit's bomb. But um that's a true story how a degenerate fucking actually was able to infiltrate an active yard and establish. You know, correspondence and everything to like Pelican Bay back in them days and everything, you know, shoot we laws up there. You needed a homeboy to catch a case to actually go to the bay or to get validated or something. So mail wasn't as easy and when that yard was nude not everybody had phones so that guy found him a perfect fucking storm man to marinate sit down manipulate people and he wrecked my career he definitely wrecked my career mm. there's been a lot of people in the past that said hey gun why didn't you try to get some get back sir if you weren't ready to leave why didn't you go in the back and plead your case to who who was there to plead my case to that cat I was in violation of red on red. I did that, man. You know, that was probably, it wasn't a good thing because you never like putting hands on a homie at all. It's not, it's not righteous. It's, it's uncalled for. Um, but I was in a situation where I was maxed out and canceled out anyway. So it really didn't matter, man. They were either going to fucking whack me on that yard or, or I was going to have to take care of my business, do what I had to do. And I chose to do what I did. There's a lot of stories floating around. Ah, Gunner, you rolled it up because you got caught with paperwork. Got caught with paperwork. Come on now, homie. You better stop it. I got on because I got on. And that just is what it is. Anyways, it's cold part about it. One of my cellies who was a degenerate ass character too, who didn't like to share his food and was a fucking asshole. That fool fucking rolled it up two, two months later after me. He was gone. Mm -hmm. The other dude that I got into it with on the yard, that was supposedly the man on that yard. He got metaflighted out of there. And the guy who was calling all the shots was all bad. So you tell me. Anyways, I'm going to enjoy and reminisce off my prison spread. I hope that you guys have a great day. I hope you get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the strive, the struggle, the struggle, the strive. I appreciate all the support I'm getting on this channel. The Collective Clips is going up. Make sure you tap into uh, Gunner's Collective TV. I'm dropping bangers over there, man. Facts. With that being said, I'm on my, I'm on my wannabe Norteño shit today. <laughs> and I'm eating sopa. Gracias. The gun. Bang, bang.